With so many new releases every year, aren't you always curious what the writing is like if you have not read from that author before? I know I am. So why not judge them by the first sentence, shall we? Hello, hello, hello. My name is Nakia. Welcome to my channel. As I said in the intro, yes, we are here to take a look at some new releases that have come out this year, particularly in January. Yes, that's right. If you like this video, I will make it a series. And before I get started, I cannot take credit. I saw this video idea on Jack Edwards' channel, actually his second channel, Jack and the Books. And I'm pretty sure in that video, he said he would love to see other booktubers do this video. So here I am. I'm doing it. Except in his video, he picked some books off his shelves that he wanted to check out, like I said, in this one. I wanna take a look at new releases because I'm always curious of what they're like, what we getting into, and especially when we have debut novels by some of these authors. So let's get into it. We got about 12, 13 books to take a look at. So like I said, let's do this. Now, most of these books were not in my 2023 most anticipated books video because that's what I thought would be fun in this video. I had some of these books on my radar, but the majority of them I did not, but I thought it'd be fun to see if it could be put on my radar if I want to check it out after this video. There's, I think, two on here that were in my most anticipated releases video, starting with the first book. So let's get to it. Now I have my trusty Kindle here. I was able to get samples of all of these books on the Kindle. If you don't have a Kindle, they usually will let you get a sample and you can usually read a good amount of a book to decide if you want to read it or not. But we're only doing the first sentence and I will also go with the prologue if that comes first. If it starts with the first chapter, I will read that. If the sentence is really short, like four words, then I will read two sentences. Deal? Okay. So first up, we have Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. This was on my 2023 Most Anticipated Releases video. I'm so excited for this one. Now, this one had two release dates. I was not sure when I did that video why it had a release date of 2022 and one in 2023, but a lovely subscriber informed me, thank you very much, that the 2022 release date was for Australia and the January 17th, 2023 release date is the US release date. So in case in case you have not seen that video, I will just read you a little bit of a blurb that they had on Amazon and it goes like this. <laughs> Knives Out and Clue meet Agatha Christie and the Thursday Murder Club in this utterly original, not to be missed, fiendishly clever blend of classic and modern murder mystery. Now I said in that video, I'm always like, mm-hmm, Knives Out and I also love Clue, so you're putting a lot on it. Let's see by the first sentence, shall we? All right, we start with a prologue. Everyone in my family has killed someone. Now, since that's the title of the book, I'm gonna read the next sentence. Some of us, the high achievers, have killed more than once. Ooh, I like it, I like it, okay. This is at the top so far. I am rather intrigued. If you've read this book already, please let me know in the comments if you liked it or not. That's it, no spoilers, but you know, share it with the group, just if you liked it or not. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Okay, now this one was not in my video, but for this video, I threw it in to see if it could pique my interest. And this one is City Under One Roof by Iris Yamashita. And just a little blurb, we have, a stranded detective tries to solve a murder in a tiny Alaskan town where everyone lives in a single high-rise building in this gripping debut by an Academy Award nominated screenwriter. What was she nominated for, you ask? I will tell you. <laughs> she wrote the screenplay for Letters from Iwo Jima, which was directed by Clint Eastwood. So we have an Academy Award nominee and her debut Debut novel. Let's see what we get from the first sentence. Starts with chapter one, no prologue. I already like it. We have a name at the top, Amy, and it says, quote, and when did you find the body? Unquote. There's no period or anything, so I'm gonna keep going. Officer Newworth paused for a moment before adding, quote, parts, question mark. I'll just finish this because it's a whole quote. When did you find the body parts? Unquote. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yes. This may be up to number one. You know, I like this kind of thing. Crime, detective, you know. Ooh, I don't know why. I'm always intrigued by when these killers scatter body parts. It's weird. Anyway, it's like a puzzle. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, next up we have You Must Remember This by Kat Rosenfield. This one was released on January 10th, 2023. I have not read anything by this author and this was not on my most anticipated releases video list, but let's see if it can get 
bumped up on my TBR. And the little blurb says, a Knives Out style whodunit with a twist of Taylor Jenkins Reid. There we go with the Knives Out thing again. <laughs> this is an immersive gothic mystery with a long ago love affair, icy death, and a rich family gone bad. Now, love affair and rich family are words I don't usually like to see in a synopsis, but let's see if the first sentence can intrigue me. All right, we open with a prologue. This takes place on Christmas Eve. Interesting. It says 2014 Christmas Eve. First sentence. She knows he's there even before he speaks. Okay, interesting. Not enough to make me like wanna keep reading just for this video, but not too bad. Okay, let's move on. Okay, next up we have a fantasy book that snuck up on this list. The majority of the books on this list are mystery thrillers because those are always the most fun to read the opening line, I believe, at least for me. Horror, I'm a little more picky, so I didn't put too many on this list. But uh, yeah, I think the mystery thrillers are always the most fun to check out. So that's mainly what we got in this video, except this one. And this one is The Keeper Six by Kate Elliott. Now this one was released on January 17th, 2023. It's short, it's only 201 pages. Let me give you a little blurb. It says, you never stop worrying about your kids, even when they're adults. Kate Elliott's action-packed The Keeper Six features a world-hopping, badass, spell-slinging mother who sets out to rescue her kidnapped adult son from a dragon lord with everything to lose. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. We start with chapter one. First sentence, the call came at night. Ooh, okay. What call? What call? I want to know. <laughs> okay, I'm intrigued. This one's towards the top. That says a lot for me for fantasy because usually it starts with these names and things that I can't pronounce and then I'm already like, I'm lost. Let's move on. All right, next up we have All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. Now, if you recall, last year I tried to read A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham and it didn't go so well. This book was chosen for me by my daughter in the month of April and I read a little bit. I was intrigued at first, but then once I got more into it, I was not into the main character and so it became a DNF. But let's see if this one can convince me to give her another try. The little blurb says, following up her instant New York Times bestseller, A Flicker in the Dark, Stacey Willingham delivers a totally gripping thriller about a desperate mother with a troubled past and all the dangerous things. Okay, so usually stories that have to do with moms, you know, and their children, those don't really interest me. But like I said, let's see what we get from the first sentence. We start with a prologue. Today is day 364. Okay, I was like, there's 365, okay. <laughs> it doesn't really do anything for me, but mm, all right. You can let me know in the comments if you've read it, if you think I should read it, but just from that, it's not really getting me, you know, especially because that's not the domestic mom thing, doesn't really get me. So let's move on. Okay, next up we have another debut novel, and this was on my most anticipated book releases for the first half of 2023 list. This is The Second Stranger by Martin Griffin. Now, this one, as I said, I am so intrigued by. I really hope it's good. I hope we get a good opening line. Let's hope so. This one was released on January 19th, 2023, and the little blurb just says, one detective, one murderer, but which is which? I talked about this in that video, I remember it, because again, I can't wait for this book. Basically, there's a hotel, there's a snowstorm, and there was an accident where there were two survivors. They show up at this hotel, both claiming to be the same detective. But the woman who works there knows that of the two survivors, one is a detective and one is the criminal that was being transported. So who is who? She has to figure it out before I guess the criminal tries to kill again or commit another crime. <laughs> so I can't wait for this. Let's hear the first sentence. Hope it's good. First sentence. Since the night was going to be a milestone for me, I poured a plastic cup of wine and took a moment to watch the storm. Ah, that doesn't really do anything for me. <laughs> okay, unfortunately this goes towards the bottom, but I am gonna read more on my own time so I can decide if I wanna read it. I hope the rest is good so I can wanna read more. Please comment down below and let me know if you've read this. I know I just talked about it and it may have gotten on your radar from that video, but like I said, let me know if you've read it what you think, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's move on. Next up, we have Age of Vice by Deep T. Kapoor. This one came out on January 3rd, 2023. And let me give you a little bit of a blurb that we have here. It says, this is the age of vice where money, pleasure, and power are everything. And the family ties that bind can also kill. Okay, so let's get to the first sentence, shall we? So this starts with 
Doesn't say prologue or anything. We just have a heading, New Delhi, 2004. First sentence. Five pavement dwellers lie dead at the side of Delhi's inner ring road. Oh, that's mighty grim. <laughs> okay. Um. Sure, it's in the middle. Doesn't really excite me, but I'm also intrigued enough to want to know more. Five pavement dwellers. Dead. Oh, okay. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Just the Nicest Couple by Mary Kubica. And this one came out on January 10th, 2023. I do know this author also wrote Local Woman Missing, which I remember hearing a lot about last year. It didn't intrigue me, but again, I remember people talking about it. I don't remember if it was good or bad. But the blurb for this one says, a husband's disappearance links two couples in this twisty thriller from master of suspense, Mary Kubica. Okay, it's domestic-y, so you know how I feel about that. Nah. But let's see about the first sentence. We have another prologue and it says, I gasp and stagger backward. Okay, that was short, so let me read one more. <laughs> my hand goes to my mouth, bearing down. Oh, I wanna keep reading. Master of suspense, baby, right? Okay, I'm intrigued. This is going up towards the top. Okay, Mary Kubica, mm -hmm, okay. Next up, we have What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. Now, this one came out on January 17th, 2023. Now, I'm very familiar with this author because she usually writes YA books. One, I was not interested in Rules for Vanishing. I know a lot of people were reading that when it came out. I don't remember if it was 2021 or 2022, but she also wrote These Fleeting Shadows, which is more of a gothic mystery book. And that one intrigued me. I actually have it on my TBR. This one is an adult novel though. So we get into adult things. So let's hear a little bit of the blurb. It says, they were 11 when they sent a killer to prison. They were heroes, but they were also liars. Ooh, 11. Better watch it now. You know how I feel about things with kids in it. <laughs> I don't know what we getting though. Let's hear the first sentence. There is a wilderness in little girls. Okay, I'll read one more sentence. We could not contain it. Eh, okay. I don't know. Stories about kids don't really intrigue me. I already said that. I mean, as far as like, I don't want anything bad to happen to the children. That's why I said, watch it. But reading about children, eh, okay. This is in the middle. I mean, maybe closer to the bottom, but okay. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Next up, we have The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. And this came out on January 23rd, 2023. She is another one that I am familiar with. I have not read any of her work, but I know her name because she wrote The Wife Upstairs. And a lot of people were talking about that book when it came out, but there's wife in the title. I don't really care for domestic -y stuff, so didn't interest me. This one doesn't really either, but for the sake of this video, I wanted you to hear the first sentence and see if I can be convinced otherwise. But before that, let's hear a little bit of a blurb. It says, the best-selling author of The Wife Upstairs returns with a brilliant new gothic suspense set at an Italian villa with a dark history. Now, gothic and suspense are buzzwords for me. I do like hearing those things, but uh, set in an Italian villa, I don't know, doesn't really seem gothic, but let's hear a first sentence and see if I can change my mind. She can make me change my mind. <laughs> first sentence, houses remember. Okay, that's only two sentences, so we gotta read more. That was what Mr. O'Hare had said to Victoria the first day she and her family came to Somerton, the day that began the end of everything. Meh, doesn't really do anything for me. Maybe for you, that's what I'm here for. But uh, yeah, this one is also towards the bottom. I don't know, it's hard to keep a tally of all of these. I'll see if I can put something on the screen at the end, but for right now, like I said, just know it's closer to the bottom. Let's move on. Okay. Next up, we have the first in a new thriller series, the Blue Mumbai series, and this one is called The Blue Bar. I'm hoping I can say this author's name right, but Damayanti Biswas. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. This one came out on January 1st, 2023, and let's hear a little bit of a blurb. It says, on the dark streets of Mumbai, the paths of a missing dancer, a serial killer, and an inspector with a haunted past converge in an evocative thriller about lost love and murderous obsession. Now, I'm intrigued by serial killer and inspector, not the lost love part, <laughs> but let's hear the first sentence and see if I'm gonna be intrigued. We start with chapter one. Tara, and it says, 2002 Borivali Station. First sentence, endings are overrated. Okay, three words, so I gotta read more. There's only one true, certain end, everything else a load of bullshit, or how you call it, bakwas. Um, okay, I'd put this in the middle. Um, I'm curious enough to read more. 
It's not like, oh, I'm not interested. I am curious enough to read more, but it's not exciting me as much as some of the other ones. I'm enjoying this so far. Let me know what you think about this. If you enjoy this kind of video, you know, give me a thumbs up if you do. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, next we have The Black House by Carol Johnstone. And this one came out on January 3rd, 2023. And it was actually blurred by Stephen King. He said, and I quote, dark and devious beautifully written. Okay, we'll see Stephen King. And the blurb on here says, a remote village, a deadly secret, an outsider who knows the truth. Okay, I'm always here for finding out about secrets, so let's see what we get from the first sentence, shall we? Prologue. It wasn't the screams he remembered most, although they crashed to shore inside the howling, furious wind and ricocheted for hours around the high cliffs above the beach. Ooh, nice writing. Okay, I'm intrigued enough to read more. Usually for my own purposes, when I read a book that has a prologue, I'll usually read a little bit of the prologue, like maybe a paragraph, and then I skip ahead to the first chapter. Because for some reason, you get two different tones between the prologue and the first chapter. Sometimes the prologue is boring and the first chapter is good or vice versa. So I like to check out both. And then I still end up DNF and stuff, but I feel a little bit better when I check out both. But let's move on to the last book, which was one of my most anticipated books for the first half of this year. All right, for this last one, we have The Drift by CJ Tudor. Now this one also has been previously released in the UK. I believe it was just released like middle of January. I will put the date here. But for the US release is January 31st, 2023. I know a lot of people are already reading this. Either they got an advanced copy or they are in the UK or got it from the UK. But I have not read it. Of course, I'm familiar with CJ Tudor. I have not read any of her books yet, but um, I do have The Burning Girls on my list and uh, Chalkman was on my list in 2020 for some reason it got bumped down but I know a lot of people love her I'm hoping I will become a fan but let's read a little bit of a blurb of this one it says three ordinary people risk everything for a chance at redemption in this audacious utterly gripping novel of catastrophe and survival at the end of the world okay I don't really remember what it said about this book but again I am intrigued all right Let's hear some of the first sentence. This one, I had to get a screenshot from my computer because I could not get it on my Kindle since it hasn't been released in the US yet, but they do have a little preview of it if you go to Amazon. So I took a screenshot of that. So for the first chapter, we start with Hannah. The first sentence says, a watch alarm was beeping. Okay, that's short, so let's read one more sentence. Someone was being sick. I'll read one more, loudly, close by. <laughs> Okay, just the start of this, it goes closer to the bottom. It's nothing that's like super memorable or super exciting, but because it's CJ Tudor and I like a little bit of the description that I remember reading, I'm still intrigued. So there you have it. Judging these 2023 January releases, people. All right, my beautiful people. So there we have it. As I said, I enjoyed this. I would love to make this a series and do this every month because as I said, I do this on my own anyway. I always read a little sample of a book before I decide if I'm going to read it. So why not do it with you except not a whole sample, just the first sentence because it is interesting how these authors decide to start their books. And especially when it's a debut novel, it gives you a little bit of a taste of what their writing is like and what you may be getting into. So let me know in the comments if you like this type of video, you want me to do more every month. As I said, like next month, I will review some books that came out at the end of this month that I didn't get to in this video. And I will go over the February releases that have just come out. And feel free to let me know if you have read any of these books and you know, you want to enlighten us. Let us know if you have to say, don't judge it by that first sentence, it gets better or or, eh, yeah, that first sentence is pretty accurate for the book. I'm curious to know. Also, let me know, do you read a sample of a book before you read it? I wanna know, am I the only one who does that? Because again, the writing really has to mesh with me. We have to gel. Sometimes I read a sample and it doesn't work out still, but I like to go in knowing we got something we're starting with. So like I said, let me know if I'm not alone with that. And if you do not have a comment, but you just wanna let me know that you made it this far in the video, you can leave me a, I guess, like the little stars emoji. I don't know. I'm just feeling like it's the beginning of the year and starry, twinkly. I don't know. Makes no sense, but it doesn't matter. That's what we're going with. <laughs> and as always, I will have all the books linked below as well as ways you can support my channel. You can donate towards coffee, tea, ebooks, all that good stuff. And I think that is it for this video, my beautiful people. So until next time, snuggle up in your hideaway with a good book. Unplug as much as possible. Be kind to all kind, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!